Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Zan Barksdale with Catching101.com. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you one of the best questions that I've ever received from a parent or anyone on my email newsletter. But really quickly before we begin, I'm gonna ask you to do a couple of things for me. If you like videos like this and you like catching content on my channel, please go ahead and click the subscribe button to let me know that you wanna get more videos and so that you're notified when new videos just like this come out. Secondly, if you find any information in this video helpful, please smash the thumbs up button to let the YouTube algorithm know that you gained some value from this video. And lastly, if you have a question about catching, please leave a comment below and I might just answer your question in a video just like this. Whenever someone signs up for my email newsletter, one of the first emails they receive is an email from me asking which questions they have about catching. And believe it or not, I actually respond to the emails and I try to answer your questions the best that I possibly can. Recently, I received one of the best emails that I've ever gotten before, so I wanted to go ahead and make a video out of it so that hopefully more people can gain some value and gain some insight into how I would attack this problem. With that said, I'll go ahead and read the email to you and then I'll give you my answer. The email starts off like this. Hi Zan, I will take you up on your offer. I'm a proud parent of a 12 year old who will be moving up to the Big Diamond next season. We live in Massachusetts. My son is fortunate to be able to attend a session in September with a prominent catching coach who spent a lot of time with the kids in a knee down or one knee setup. My son very much liked it and has incorporated it as his primary stance throughout fall ball. He was able to attend a, a second catching clinic recently with another catching instructor who also utilized the knee down or one knee setup in his teachings. My reason writing is I have no idea what good looks like on the one knee down setup. I'm unable to find any video content on the web reviewing how to perform the knee down setup properly. Obviously, I do not know what he has been instructed. Therefore, I am unable to correct any mistakes he may or not be making and provide any guidance in helping him uh, and receive the ball properly. I would appreciate any content or how why a player should use the one knee down setup and how to receive the ball properly from this position. Thanks in advance. Now, I thought that was a fantastic email with some really good insight. And the reason I wanna share it with you is because I feel like a lot of parents are in the exact same uh, position as well as a lot of catching instructors across the country. The one knee down or the knee down stances or setups are very new to many people. The reason you're probably having a hard time finding good info on the one knee down setup is because it's so much different from player to player. And what I mean by that is, it's, it's very much an art and not so much a science where we have to work with each player and figure out what works best for him. Which catchers are better with their right knee down? Which catchers are better with their left knee down? How do we angle our body? Are we ever in a kickstand? Or do we ever get back in a traditional setup? Are we in a knee down with runners on base uh, or no runners on base? There are a lot of different variables, including the pitcher and the, and the game situation that dictate what we're gonna be in and how we're gonna react with our one knee setup. So it's not a one size fits all answer. And that's why you're having a hard time uh, finding some video content because it's very difficult to teach through video or remotely. You probably need to be with a coach or instructor who knows what they're doing and understands it and can make necessary adjustments as he works with your son. Now, with that said, I know that's not a very good answer. And, and most of you don't have a catching coach locally that you can go work with and he can give your son instruction. So this is what I would say. Over the past two years at CatcherCon, we've had multiple speakers every year speak about the one knee setup and the new positions and the new stances and how they incorporate uh, that into their catcher's training. So if you haven't checked out the videos on CatcherCon.com or you haven't attended the conference in person, that may be something you're interested in doing. I do wanna go ahead and add another point though. One of the reasons that this is so difficult or tricky to implement and understand is because it's very different at the big league level as it is at the amateur level. At the big league level, they're using advanced systems like Hawkeye and TrackMan that can very accurately track the pitches on an XY grid, show exactly where they cross the strike zone, and then we can compare them to historical data and reference it to figure out what percentage of the time that pitch should be called a strike, what, what percentage of the time is not called a strike, and there we can grade the catchers to know who is actually getting more strikes than they're losing and which catchers are losing more strikes than they're getting. Now at the amateur level, we don't have the hardware in place to be able to track that, so you have to have a trained eye and you have to have subjective, some subjective opinion. 
However, I will say that you should keep this in mind. The main reason that we have a one knee stance or a knee down setup is because it's going to provide benefits to us receiving. Yes, there are many catching coaches who are now teaching that it's easier to, to block uh, and sometimes even throw out of a knee down setup. Uh, but for the most part, the reason that people have switched is for the benefits to receiving the baseball and gaining low strikes and turning pitches at the bottom of the strike zone into strikes, which might otherwise be called a ball. Since amateur baseball fields across the country don't have that hardware installed in all the fields, there's just not enough data to accurately be able to uh, apply a scientific and data-driven approach into receiving, but we can still try to get better, and what we're finding is many guys are getting more strikes at the bottom of the zone, and they are improving as receivers in a knee-down stance. Now that brings me to the second part of the email, which I was really fired up about, and I thought there were some excellent talking points in it. Again, the father that wrote this email, he said, I don't know what my son's been instructed. I don't know the proper methods. And that way I can't really help him and I can't teach him and work with him and progress. So the first thing that I would say to that parent or any parent watching this video is when your son attends a lesson or a camp or some sort of setting where they're being taught something new, I would highly recommend that you stay and pay attention and even take notes. I know personally when I work with young players or amateur players, their parents are usually there. Uh, many parents stay at my camps, they take a book full of notes so that when they go back they can reference it and try to help their son uh, get better and progress because this, maybe the son forgot something, maybe they need a second set of eyes and that's perfectly okay. That is the job of the parent. However, in this case, he said that I wasn't there for the instruction. So in that case, you're probably going to need to either send them back to the instructor, find someone else who is qualified and understands it, uh, because it's gonna be very difficult if you don't know what you're trying to teach or you don't know what you're looking for to help them get better. It would be no different than if my son wanted to start taking drum lessons. I don't know anything about playing the drums and I'm not qualified to teach him. So I would send him to a music uh, school or some sort of drum lessons. Uh, and if I don't know what they're teaching him, I'm gonna have a hard time reinforcing that at home. So the same thing is true for catching. Uh, if you're taking your son to, a, to lessons or to a camp or an instructional setting, I would highly encourage you to stay and take notes. I believe that most instructors are open-minded to this. If they're not, that may, be, that may be a conversation you wanna have because I think you have every right to stay and listen while your son or daughter is getting instruction from a coach, okay? So you definitely want to know what they're being taught so that you can reinforce that at the practice uh, outside of the lesson. Lastly, as I wrap up this video, I just wanna give a couple of extra thoughts. Now, I know the one knee down stances are becoming very popular. Many catchers are going to them. And then you see in this email, many catchers as young in 10, 11, 12, and sometimes even younger are adopting the one knee down stance. I think that's a great thing for them to try, but I think it's really important that you put a lot of work in, you spend a lot of time with them in practice, and you can determine if they're better in a traditional setup or if they're better in a one knee down stance. Again, not everybody has the same flexibility, mobility, athleticism. Uh, not everyone is built to be in a one knee setup. Not everyone is built necessarily to be in a traditional setup. We're finding that some guys have success one way and other guys have success a different way. So I think you're taking a great step here by reaching out and trying to ask for instruction. I just wanted to let you know that it's a very complicated subject matter. And while yes, there are some teaching points and some things that we can go over in a future video, I want you to know that it's very individualistic. It's very much an art, not a science. Um, there are very few hard rules. And a lot of times what we have to do is you have to play with the catcher, work with the catcher, and figure out what puts him in the most positions uh, to have success while he's receiving or blocking or throwing. Guys, I appreciate you watching this video. If you found this helpful or interesting at all, again, please hit the thumbs up button. That would mean a lot. And also, if you have a question that you'd like me to answer in a video format, please leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you and answer more questions and start to do more videos like this in the future. I appreciate your time and I look forward to talking to you again soon.